Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today a rather unique scenario by High Bacon Bomb, one of my naval architects. A naval architect, in case you're not familiar with the term, is a Patreon rank that allows you to submit a scenario every month with the chances of uh, getting it featured into a video. People vote on it using the Patreon system and that way you can get your scenario featured. Now, this one, we're going to be building War Carriers, as the title of the video has already indicated. No, Carriers are not yet implemented into the game, uh, nor do I know exactly how they're going to be implemented into the game. But High Bacon Bomb wrote a scenario where we are going to be building something that resembles it. With the loss of most of their mainline fleet carriers at the Battle of Midway, Japan decides to retrofit some of their older battleships into Carriers. But with little resources, they decide to do a hybrid carrier-slash-battleship called Aviation Battleships or War Carriers. However, the United States attack the shipyards where these ships are docked. You must take these half-baked ships and defend the port from the US Navy. Now, you can definitely say that my ships are somewhat older, because my ships are from 1920. Versus a battleship and three heavy cruisers from the United States from 1935. That is a substantial tech advantage for the US, and um, I can only hope to make up for it by using some big guns. But I will have those big guns at a, submiss or a substantial well lack of accuracy, because I'm going to have a really bad 4 weight offset. Because the rule here with this scenario, remember that these ships are half complete in the retrofit. The stern of the ship must be completely empty, except for the rear tower. You uh, must use Dreadnought style hulls and use the Issei class Dreadnought for reference. So, um, four weight offset is going to be a bit of a problem. Now before I crack on with the rest of the video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That way you can see more of my uh, well, currently pretty naval, naval themed channel videos come up. Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, of course, as you're watching it, but also from the depths, where I'm currently working on a submarine design. I have War on the Sea that I'm uh, very much progressing with. And, of course, um, we have some War Game Red Dragon. Not so much naval-themed, but um, I hope you find it enjoyable nonetheless. Now, a battleship, which has a substantial tech disadvantage is going to rely on some really big guns but the challenge is to fit those where let's see can I put a secondary tower here <laughs> okay it's not really in line with the scenario but it works um, my plan is to have the stern empty like that and then have the guns on the bow. Biggest guns I can find. 16 inch guns. They're only Mark 1 though. Oh, that's not good. That's going to cut into my accuracy substantially. Let's say at a range of 20,000 meters, I have an accuracy of 0.2 versus 0.2 here, but these things have a reload of 128 seconds versus 62 seconds. Damage 381, damage 822. Uh, despite all of those substantially worse stats for the 16-inch, I'm going to go with that. Because I'm kind of worried about the United States battleship. If they have something that is uh, really potent, and it is possible, considering that they have that 1935 tech limit, it's going to mean that I'll need to punch through that armor really quickly. Which probably will not be easy. Oh, my weight offset's going to be absolutely sky high. Oof. 46%. I might as well turn this thing into a submarine while I'm at it. Because it won't need much help to dive. With a stern that light, slash about that heavy, this thing is going to want to dip down almost instantaneously. Right. Secondary guns. No, casemate guns. There we go. That's the casemates set. I can make the, the, the Satsuma even bigger. I'm not sure if that's going to help me, though. But it, it just might. What? 
Now I cannot put this thing on the stern. So I could do it with a smaller hull, but not the bigger one. That makes little sense. But okay, um, if that's the way that it's going to be. I'm going to try and fit the secondary tower on here. Ideally, something that actually wants to fit. Come on, I'm going to need every inch of deck space here to squeeze that secondary tower on. There we are. Can I also use the 10 or the, the 9? No, 9's too big. Oh, stats are that dissimilar. Oh! 57%! Uh, yeah. Right. I can put that casemate back in, but that thing is so light relative that it doesn't really matter. Now, considering this, I'm probably going to go back with a smaller hull because I just cannot make that work. So I think it was 40,000. What the hell? It's like the game realized what I was trying to do and went, uh, no, you can't do that. Uh, base accuracy. See, this accuracy is plus 11 versus a plus 3. Um, with my massive 4 weight offset, I'm going to need every advantage I can get. This is a plus 14 base accuracy. Plus 16, plus 20, plus 25. Yes, great. But tower is way too big. However... If I do it like this, would it fit? Yeah. Ish. Can it turn? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Let's shift the secondary tower slightly back by using the smaller design. Then bring the main tower slightly farther back. That should give these things a bit more breathing room. So that they can hopefully turn a little better. I have a weight offset of 53 on the starboard side. 51%. Seriously, that accuracy is going to kill me. Um, longitudinal weight offset. 54. Minus 16% base accuracy. Minus, sorry, plus 27% accuracy penalty from the waves. Minus 49% acceleration. Minus 27% turn rate. <sighs> Plus 22% deceleration. Yeah, well, my whole bow is sticking into the water like I'm preparing to dive. So I'm not surprised. Considering the way that this ship's going to be behaving, it's it's not going to be pleasant. 93% engine efficiency. I'll take it. Now, it says keep the stern empty. Um, but... That... Really? That got me point... What? Point seven percent. Really? Putting 2,800 tons closer to the center of the ship. Okay. Uh, now, it does say that I need to have at least something on this barbette, I think. Yeah. So, we're going to put an 8-inch triple on there. Defense against destroyers will be 8-inch guns, these casemates. And the rest of it, I think, is just going to go into some more loading systems. Um, oh, Jesus, that makes the turrets heavier. Nope. Heavy shells, 57.5. Reinforced... Oh. Reinforced bulkheads pushes it down to 54, but also makes the ship overweight. Rangefinder, yeah, that might be a good idea. Uh, how am I going to make this thing work? Turtleback armor, no. Slow her down. 
too fast and too heavy there. Um, acoustics, no. I'm going to forego that and hope that my other ships can take up that slack. Belts, maybe. What's my reload? 117 seconds. Good lord. 95 seconds, that's better, but once again, I'm 500 tons too heavy. I just don't really know what else to take off of this ship. Maybe barbette thickness? At the expense, and you know what, torpedo blister, we're not going to get hit by torpedoes anyway. Um, more belt armor. A bit more conning tower. <coughs> mm. <laughs> Every point of armor that I put on the turrets immediately translates into a point of... Um, or a percentage point of weight offset. Yikes. What about belt extended? Yeah, see? That's going to counteract it. Because it also makes the belt on the stern heavier. So I'm down to 55.4. With a 9.1 inch stern and bow belt. Oh, this is going to be a terrible design. I don't think it's going to get much better than this, I'm afraid. Right, Satsuma, battle carrier. To the battle you go, buddy. So, the US has brought one battleship with seemingly three turrets. They got three heavies, and that's the objective that I need to sink. The battleship and the three heavy ships. The three heavy cruisers. The five lights and the six destroyers are going to be a nuisance, but they're not mission critical. They're not completely part of the mission objective. So, focus on these, focus on these, and make sure they die. Uh, another problem is that I'll probably, probably get spotted before I spot them. Yeah, enemy have spotted me. Me, consisting of the heavy cruiser Yoko. She's a big girl. That heavy cruiser is almost as long as the Satsumo. But I'm 44,000 tons and you're 14,000 tons. With a whole load of 6-inch guns. That's going to be a really useful asset to fight light cruisers and destroyers. 4-inch guns, 2-inch guns, more 2-inch guns, and torpedoes, port and starboard side, mounted fast, 6 kilometers. Ship, 29 knots, maximum bulkheads, I like you. Light cruisers, Toyota and Yeyema. And these also carry 6-inch guns, many bulkheads, 26 knots, torpedoes, every which way, and a couple of quad torpedo launchers, fast, 6.3 knots, 20-inch, uh, sorry, 6.3 kilometers, 57 knots. Destroyers, what do you have? Maxi bulkheads, way to go. You even got a couple of quad launchers? 12? Whoa. Promising. Survivability is good. Turning circle is good. Uh, submersible capability <laughs> is good. Yeah, I think we can make this work. Um, how am I going to play this? I need to spot for the battleships. We have Division 5 on screening duty. Which means we got the Sakura, the Inazuma and the Usugumo. I want you gentlemen to head over there. Normal formation. You guys over here, normal formation. The light cruisers, I want you to follow. Normal formation. And the heavy cruiser, just kind of maintain course. At 19 knots, that's fine. Now the other destroyers, you guys rush ahead at best speed, which is 32 knots in fleet formation. And I'm going to put these guys, the Hatsuse and the Satsuma, in line abreast formation. Because most of my guns are bow facing anyway. I don't need to turn broadside in this case because it probably won't help me. So let's slow you down a little bit and have you speed up. This way we can ensure that all the ships are lined up by the time that we probably get into spotting range. Uh, you are... 
Oh, you're under the command of the uh, Usugumo. Okay, right. Usugumo, as opposed to the battleships, I need you to slow down a little. Because the rest of your formation friends are not here yet. The other DDs, I want you to make a slight starboard turn. Where are they? About 14 clicks? Yeah, somewhere between 12 and 14 clicks. I have taken some damage. Time to smoke up. Uh, these guys have pretty decent torpedo range for 1920. So I'm hoping that I can spot them at a range of 9 to 10. And pretty much instantly drop torps. If only to disturb their formation a little bit. And it seems like the battleships and heavy cruisers, which are probably fighting me right now, have switched targets to the Sawakazi as the other destroyer smoked up. So let's make the Sabakazi and her group even harder to hit. Zigzagging left and right. Hello, kitty. She probably wants to go outside. As cats do when I'm trying to record a video. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was rude. Um, yeah. Yugiri. What the hell was that about? I guess my destroyers got a little bit predictable here, despite zigzagging. And just got hit. And that was a 16-inch hit on the Yugiri. So at least we know what the battleship's packing. Uh, my battleships increased to, to, well, to best speed. Oh, we found something. At a range of 8 kilometers, we have found a destroyer. And, um... Well, something launched a torpedo at me. I'm not sure if it was this guy or not. Uh, it was definitely not this guy, because he just launched his torps. At? I don't know at what. Let's have the Usugomo group turn. Sawakazi is probably not going to survive. Take advantage of 35 years... Or sorry, 25 years. No, 15 years. It's... Uh, not making things easy here. Yoko, rush ahead. Target and eliminate that destroyer. Hold on, that's one torpedo. That thing definitely launched more than one. Yeah. Okay. Now, annoyingly, despite supposedly stuff being at... 6 to 12 kilometer range. I still can't see it. Turn to starboard. I'm getting some damage on the engine and the rudder. Wait, they just torpedoed one of their own. Torpedo from a red hits a red for 740 damage. So they might have suffered from one of those uh, starfish bugs. Where a destroyer that's set to go aggressive fires in every single direction. That is a lot of firepower for a heavy cruiser. That's 15 8 inch guns. Target that. 13 kilometers out. Turn in that direction. I'm gonna have to go at a slight angle, otherwise, I cannot bring all those guns to bear. Yugiri, what's your range? Eight. Torp. Torpedoes away. Is that all of them or just... It appears to be two of its launchers. So there's more out there. We can get another salvo out of you. Hopefully. Yeah, the aft launcher is still turning. Americans are being sneaky. I'm probably quick too. Considering the speed at which they're able to keep at bay from my ships. There's that DD again. Spotable only at 8 kilometers. Great. 
Now, this heavy cruiser is definitely not going to stick around and wait for torpedoes. But I think it's more to do with the rest of the formation changing direction than this guy actually noticing that there are torps in the water. I don't believe that they can do that that fast. Smoke screen in 90 seconds. Ah, we found some more. What is that? That's one of your heavy cruisers. So that's the guy that you torped. Friendly torped. At this point, the enemy has done more damage to themselves than I have done to them. Battleship. That's some substantial firepower in nine 16-inch guns, but they really skimped on the secondaries. One dual triple or one dual three-inch gun. I can't even find. Where'd you put that? The hunt is on. Where'd you put your gun? Not on the bow? Here. <laughs> right underneath the secondary turret. Or the, the stern turret. Anyway, uh, you're going. Your range is 9 kilometers. Your torpedo range is 9.3. I'm going to try and race up to this ship and drop some torpedoes closer to it. Hoping that it'll work. The problem that I see is that there might be screening forces around in the form of uh, destroyers and or light cruisers, which will make it very, very difficult for me to get the torpedoes in. But even if I don't get the torpedoes onto the target, I'll at least be able to turn or force it to turn. At least such is the plan. Uh, something ran out of one by four deck tubes. Okay, so the destroyers don't carry more than one launch, probably. Reduced set of torpedoes. Battleship direction of travel is slightly away from me, so I'm going to have to go almost directly for it. The battleships Hatsusi and Satsuma have done almost no damage. My heavy cruiser is still chasing down a section of destroyers here. Albeit with limited effect. Standard. Oh, standard ammo for torps. Okay, so they do have a few salvos. Now, my plan initially was to just ignore these smaller ships, but it does not seem to work. Because these smaller ships are making for a real nuisance, and uh, it's not something that my bigger ships can really deal with. Sure, they got those 8-inch casemates, but they have absolutely no torpedo protection. Making for a really fragile target. Did you get torped? No. Could have easily been torped. Uh, 7 3. I'll take it. Drop torps. Go on. It's because he's heading out. Shit. Alright, new torpedo target. Salem. It's not ideal. Oh, Salem is heading away. Never mind. Yayoi, you're going to have to get closer. And it's not the battleship that you should be worried about. It's something else. There's something shooting from here. And I suppose it's a light cruiser. Now, we managed to kill one of their destroyers. Uh, the Sakura died just there. Yoko is still chasing down the twinning. Richard as Edwards and Rind. There's another destroyer. No, heavy cruiser out there. <sighs> Yayoi flooding range now 6.4. Try it again. Because those torpedoes are definitely my best weapon against this battleship. 28 and a half knots. Please give me minimum bulkheads on that thing. Yes. That might help. Sonar 2. That's problematic. Because they will spot the torps and they will dodge. Turning circle 600. So they can dodge as well. Come on. Uh, 
I have done six and a half thousand damage. I have taken... 9.2. I seem to be a little bit behind. Oh, Jesus. What happened to you? Torpedoes. I'm so busy trying to manage various aspects of the battle that I'm overlooking... Well, at least one ship, and usually more than one. And a light cruiser got on the receiving end of that. Ohio is now directly heading away from the Yayoi. Never mind. It's not worth it. You guys are trying to kill a heavy cruiser? And destroyers? That's good. Means that I might be able to close in a bit more. Provided that I can get up to that speed. Which, with the bow dipping as low as it is, it's not particularly likely. Though it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Now, Yoko, you're my main weapon against these destroyers. Fast firing, six inch guns. Or relatively fast firing. Chase them down. Even though the Richard doesn't have any torpedoes anymore. I still need them out of the way. Heavy cruisers are also packing torpedoes. And they seem to have selected the Yoko for her target. There goes the Ayoi, which means I also lost line of sight to the battleship. That is unfortunate. Usagumo is going to die. Destroyers are not having a good time today. At least these casemates are getting to do some work against the destroyers. Or, well, attempting. Doesn't look to be terribly effective, though. Yoko status? Target twinning? Twinning? Twining? I don't know. Ooh, that was good. That was an 8 inch casemate hitting him. Something ran out of torpedo tubes. Or out of torpedoes. Assumed a torpedo threat on the Inazuma. Turn to avoid. These guys are not terribly capable of dealing with flooding. So at least I might be able to sink some of their destroyers. But getting any of those heavy cruisers is a different challenge entirely. Because the Yoko is not capable of pinning to Boston. I mean, the secondary is on the twinning and the main is on the Boston. How heavy are these things protected? Minimum. Excellent. That's the, probably the one thing I can exploit on these ships. Their inability to survive flooding. Both on the destroyers and the heavy cruisers. There's the Inazuma's death. And I'm not sure exactly what the light cruisers are up to. They do have light cruisers, yes? Let me check. Uh, yes, they have five light cruisers. Twinning dead, very good. Next target, the Richard S. Ed Richard S. Edwards. Boston is taking some fire, but also torped the Yoko again. At least the battleships and the Yeyama are still alive. Although they seem to be... Whoa! Yeah. I'm getting distracted this battle. And I'm getting flanked. I'm... <laughs> I'm actually used to the AI being so passive. That I'm entirely uncomfortable and unused to being flanked. I mean, normally I have the enemy fleet just over there on one side. But these DDs decided, no, we're not going to do that anymore. And they are torping the Satsuma and the Hatsuse. And they're doing substantial amounts of damage with those torpedoes. It's the only damage that they can do. But... At this rate, I will not be able to sink that battleship. And uh, with three damaged engines, 
getting rid of that water is also going to be quite a challenge. Yeah, Yama, it's now your time to shine. That's the Yoko. You know what? I could just run up to the Boston and send those torps. That way, killing at least one of their heavy cruisers off. While still putting some pressure on the Richard S. Edwards. I have done 3,000 damage and taken 17,000. Good lord. That's a lot of damage. What are you currently firing at? The Boston. Don't do that. Target Salem. Whoa! Yeah, these guys can also launch the torps. The Rin's not really a threat, but the heavy cruisers most definitely are. And the secondaries on the Richard. Range? 1-7. Can you pen me? Yes, you can. Can I pen you? Mmm, kind of. But the torpedoes are my biggest weapon here. But damn, these guys got aggressive. I didn't catch that in time. Well done to the AI there. Uh oh, that's oh. used to detect the torps. It's usually not a good sign. Because the Hatsuse does not come with a sonar suite. And that means that she's <laughs> basically looking outside the ship and going, Ah, that's not good. I think the Boston is understanding what I'm up to. I really need to sink this thing quickly because in a few minutes that torpedo launcher will have reloaded. Oh, no, you're not. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus. Structural integrity down to 0.1%. That is less than ideal. I forgot that they had launchers on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, buddy, I'm going to ram you. It's the last thing I do. That was well played to the Boston. Doink. Dead. Uh. Uh, what? What are we doing? Could you kindly... Get off my ship. This scenario is an absolute shit show. If I'd have gotten less of a tank disadvantage, I might have made it work, but... Against one accurate, fast battleship and DDs, which can torp me without me doing much about it, and that was just my own stupidity, it's basically GG at this point. My accuracy is 4%. And sure enough, I can pen the Salem alright. But I can barely hit her. Even at a range of 6 kilometers. The Satsuma is in a slightly better condition. We're chasing down a destroyer that I should not be chasing down. Hmm. I'm sorry guys, I'm not really on my game today. All ships have taken either light or massive damage. None of my ships is unharmed. Uh, Usagumo is effectively out of the fight. Let's just have you retreat altogether. This is pointless. Absolutely pointless. Chance to pen. Satsuma. 71%. But we're just not hitting it. It's only a matter of time before either Salem or St. Louis are going to launch torps again. And this thing has a turning circle of less than a kilometer, just slightly less than a kilometer. So dodging is not something that I do well either. Interesting scenario, but 
both my poor execution and an inability to actually actually hit stuff because I have such a disastrous front weight offset is making it very very difficult at least we might be able to kill the Salem but the heavily damaged Boston is still out there and that battleship I once again have the same problem I cannot catch it I elected to go with bigger guns and less speed and the result of that I just can't catch it I'm not fast enough And the enemy has done 20,000 points of damage more than I have. It really is that bad. I'm waiting for the St. Louis to torp again. Not that I can really do much about it. Short of trying to kill it, but... <laughs> that would involve hitting the target. Which... That too is something I don't do very well. There goes the Yugiri. Finish off the Salem, will you? Swing those big 16s over the left. Port side. Jeez, they got scorched as well. That must have been 16 inch impact. There we go. That's at least some flooding. I think from the casemate guns. Huh. That's nice. Fire's broken out. And I think the flooding's gonna kill her very soon. Come on, buddy. You got this. There she goes. Salem's down. New target. St. Louis. Faster. Bad angle. And mostly unharmed. Panchan's probably not as good. Oh, it's not terrible. Hatsuse? What? Oh. All engines on the Hatsuse are damaged. And they're not coming back. I don't think I've ever had a ship this dead in the water. Like, this thing is completely immobile. It's trying to get up to 1.2 knots but effectively it can't. And that means that the only guns which are capable of engaging the, the Boston as it's coming in are the 8-inch gun on my stern and the 8-inch casemates. The 16s cannot do anything. Great. Now on the one hand we have the AI going aggressive with their destroyers. On the other hand we have the same AI... Whoa! Um, doing absolutely nothing with their light cruisers. The light cruisers are just not... I don't know. Are they even here? Yeah, they are here. They're escorting the Ohio. Which has ceased fire due to reduced ammo, I think. No, it just doesn't have any ammo left. This was not even the ship that did the most damage. I think that was torpedo damage. <laughs> right. Well, just like yesterday's scenario, I'm going to do what I can. Damage-wise, and see where it gets me. Hello, Rind. Yeyama is mostly unable to do any damage. You can hit me from there? Whoa. Interestingly, the Boston seems to be oblivious to the fact that if she sails past me, she's going to get the attention of the 16-inch guns. As that happens, she's going to get killed off. Destroy the secondary gun. Okay. Fire and flooding. That's your bow gone, buddy. That's the Boston. Don't pass a battleship like that. I lost contact with their battleship again. Okay, so I've sunk two out of the four ships that need sinking. The third one's over there, under fire. But 
I can barely keep up. The fourth one is somewhere, <laughs> I don't know, over there. Off in the distance where I cannot catch it. Hmm. I don't really know what changes I could have made to the battleships to make them more viable either. Arguably gone with smaller 14 inch guns, faster firing, super heavy shells. Uh, but would that have been enough to punch through the battleship? Maybe. What's Suse? Yeah, the Hatsuse is just sitting there waiting to get torped. This thing is absolutely not going anywhere. And because I didn't have any spare room to put an auxiliary engine, didn't have any displacement left, I couldn't really give her any kind of additional anti-flooding capability. So that too is going to be a problem. At least the St. Louis and the Rind here don't have any torps. Left, that is. Feels like I am finally catching up with doing some damage. Whoa! No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, dear. That's one turret gone. It's just waiting for the next one to pop. Damage report. Buoyancy is dropping quickly. All ships flooding. About a stern. A turret's gone. Which means I'm effectively a super firing 16 inch battleship now. <laughs> Buoyancy 50. Close those bulkhead doors. 46. 47. 48. We're going back up. St. Louis is dead. Really? Oh, you flooded. Okay. So that's three out of the four ships that I need dead, actually dead. But... Yeah. See, there goes the Ohio. That's almost 16 clicks out. And... Um, Satsuma is kind of drifting. She's just drifting along at her currently 13 knots, but she's going to slow down to nothing. Because she too has lost all engine power. And with a bow that heavy, both from flooding and from having a lot of turrets on it, she just can't move. So, I suppose I defended the port where these uh, battle carriers were being built as much as possible. I scared off the heavy cruisers, or at least I scared off the Americans in general. But I was just not able to do that battleship, kind of as I had expected. Still, I hope you guys enjoyed the scenario. Um, again, not carriers, but this is uh, an interesting way to sort of display what could have happened and what issues you could have had with a battle carrier. Weight displacement could be a problem. Anyway, let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon for another video.